Hello guys! In this video I will give you an introduction into MIPS assembly and what actually happens on the CPU when you code an assembly so that you will have a better understanding of the matter. Let's get started! First of all, coding an assembly means giving your CPU instructions on what tasks to perform. Therefore, you should have a basic grasp of what a CPU does. I'll explain the basics of it now and I promise to keep it simple. The CPU is connected to the RAM, where the programs that are running are stored. This is where the CPU gets the instructions from, like a program that you've coded. In the CPU, there's another faster storage called registers. Registers contain values that a CPU can perform computations on. You can think of them as variables because you can store values in them and manipulate them. One of the registers is called the program counter which simply keeps track of where we are inside the program. It starts at zero and gets updated at every new step. In the CPU, there is also the instruction register that stores the current instruction the CPU is working on. And then you have another register called the accumulator, where the results of computations are temporarily stored. A CPU also has a clock. With every tick, the CPU goes through one step of the fetch-execute cycle, which is the basic cycle of a CPU, meaning it fetches an instruction from the RAM and executes it. Now let's go through a simple program that adds two numbers together and stores them in the RAM. When you run a program, you load it into the RAM. The program contains the instructions and the variables. Every instruction from the program has an address. First, the CPU fetches the instruction that corresponds with the program counter into the instruction register. In the beginning, it's zero, so we get the first instruction. Load 3 means load the value at address 3 into the accumulator, which is 8. Next, the program counter increments by 1. The first instruction is done, and we continue with the next one. Since the program counter is set to 1, we fetch the instruction from RAM at address 1. This time, it's at 5. The instruction gets executed, which means add the value at address 4 to the accumulator. The value at address 4 is 5, so we add it to the value 8 in the accumulator and we get 13. The instruction is done and we continue with the next one. We fetch the instruction store 5 into the instruction register. The instruction gets executed. And this time we store the value in the accumulator at the address 5 in the RAM. Let's switch over to Mars, so that we can write an assembly program that prints Hello World. I will leave a link in the description where you can download the Mars simulator. This is what you see when you open Mars. This area is where you write your code. Below that you get your outputs and on the right you can see the registers and the value that are stored in them. An assembly program is split into two sections. The data section is where you declare the variables and the text section is where the rest of the code goes. In the data section you declare the variable by writing a name followed by a colon. Next you write a dot followed by the type of data the variable contains. For strings you use ASCII which is a way for numbers to represent text. Remember that the computer can only work with numbers, so we need a system to represent words using numbers and this system is called ASCII. The C at the end means it is null terminated, which means there will be a null at the end of the string so that the system knows when the string ends. The actual words go into the quotation marks. Now we want to print the message, so we go into the text section and start coding. We need to fetch the message into a register and tell the kernel of the operating system to print it. If we want to print something, we need to put it into register A0. To do that, we use the instruction li, which stands for load immediate, and it simply means that it loads a value into a register. After that, we write the register it should load into, which in this case is a0, and after that, the value to load into the register, in this case our message. Now we click on this icon to assemble the file, and then on the one next to it to run the file. On the right you can see that the register A0 now contains a new hexadecimal value. And this is our hello world message. In order to print the message we have to add some code. 
We now need to perform a syscall, which is the interface between our program and the kernel that allows us to do things like print strings, get user input or open files. To do that, we need to first tell the system what data type to print. Every syscall has a service number. Printing the string is the service number 4. So we simply load the number 4 into the register v0 and the system now knows that we want to print the value in the register a0. After we told the system what syscall to perform and what value to print, we now can issue the syscall instructions by simply writing syscall at the end. Now the kernel will look in the v0 register to see what syscall we want to perform, in this case number 4, which means to print a string, and it will then look into the a0 register to find the value we want to print, and it will then print it. Now we need to assemble and run the file again, and as we can see in the output, we get the hello world string we expected.